A Mardi Gras Sunday. God is with us, and the people say, yeah. Here we find new life. So it is Mardi Gras Sunday. That is the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, and Lent begins. It's also New Member Sunday. It's also Transfiguration Sunday. Lots of Sundays going on here this morning. <laughs> I have a question. How many of you are uh, Saturday Night Live watchers or, you know, occasional catch up kind of thing? You know, we all have our favorite skits, and I was, um, I, I showed. Uh, this week, some folks in the office, Tom, especially the uh, the copy uh, the copy skit. You know, remember making copies that that guy and the, the Tom Tomarutsky Tom Tom thing. 
You guys know that skit from way back when? Who knows that skit? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> last night was the first time in years that, um, that uh, the, on Saturday Night Live, they skipped their opening comedy act. And what they did is they replaced it with a tribute to Ukraine. And um, the Ukrainian chorus, Dunka, of New York sang Prayer for Ukraine, um, typically sung at the end of both Orthodox and Greek Catholic worship services in Ukraine. And the words went like this. Uh, With learning and knowledge, enlighten us. Your children, small in love, pure and everlasting, let us, O Lord, grow. We pray, O Lord Almighty, protect our beloved Ukraine. Grant our people and country all your kindness and grace. Bless us with freedom, bless us with wisdom, guide into kind world, bless us, O Lord, with good fortune forever and evermore. So I share that knowledgeable that um, on our hearts this day are the people of Ukraine and the president of Ukraine as we move through this worship service, as we acknowledge so many pieces uh, to this Sunday from new members and transfiguration uh, to Mardi Gras. So welcome. Uh, Welcome to each and every one of you, uh, longtime members, old friends, new visitors, new members, those who are watching from home, you are with us in spirit. Friends, whatever your age, whomever you love, no matter your income, whatever the color of your skin, whatever your abilities, whatever the state of your physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual health, God welcomes you here, and so do we. Here we like to say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, You belong here. Friends, let's take a moment to be together in the silence of prayer. Spirit of God, come, be with us this hour. Fill our hearts, open our minds, ignite our spirits. Make us mindful of your presence in our lives through our worship. May we hear your voice, recognize your call, and go forth ready and willing to follow where you lead. Amen. Please stand as you are able and inspired and join me in the call to worship. From a cloud and in a crowd, God speaks to us, calling us to be lovers of justice, to share hope with the broken. On mountaintops and in neighborhoods, Christ calls to us. On the playground, molding us into who we are. On the playground and at the workstation, the spirit whispers in our hearts, gather up our fears as well as our dreams and offer them to God.
Good morning, church. You may be seated. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Jake Demira for being back with us, uh, uh, leading us in uh, these beautiful spirituals and, and songs this morning. Um, some of you will remember Jake. He was uh, one of our, our section leaders uh, in the chancel choir for, for a time and uh, went on to graduate and uh, teach music, but he still comes back for special occasions like this. So it's always good to see you back, Jake. So Rev Kev and I, um, I trust Rev Kev, Kev has had this experience, will occasionally get asked by somebody, do you receive confessions? And um, most often this person is coming from a, a Catholic background, and uh, the, the short answer is yes. And I think we both had the experience of sitting with someone in our office and uh, hearing what's on their hearts, and, and that can be very meaningful, communicating God's forgiveness to them. Uh, it is more typical in our tradition, our congregational UCC tradition, to confess corporately. That is, in worship, we confess on behalf of humanity, which is why we say these prayers in unison every Sunday. Um, some people say, but that doesn't sound like me. Well, we aren't just praying for ourselves. We are confessing on behalf of a broken and most imperfect humanity. Uh, this is Mardi Gras Sunday, just before Ash Wednesday, so it is certainly especially appropriate on this day that we confess together. So please pray these words with me. We admit that we are often afraid to come near you, glorious creator. For if we do, you might see how our faces darken with anger as we speak hurtful words, or whiten with fear of those who are different, or redden from the depths of our desires. We can spend so much time gazing in the mirror of our longings that we are unable to see the faces etched with loneliness hollowed by hunger, overshadowed by hopelessness. You reveal the mystery of your grace, Holy One, by pouring out mercy upon us. As you bend down to listen, may we speak your love to all those around us. As you call us into your presence, you send us out to do your justice, which brings hope to the world. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our love, our justice. On mountaintops and in valleys, in our hopes and in our hearts, God knows us better than we know ourselves, and God forgives us when we cannot forgive ourselves. By God's mercy, we are forgiven. By God's mercy, we are made whole. By God's mercy, we are equipped to serve others. Thanks be to God. Amen.
a scripture reading from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became a dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which was they were about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down by sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. They were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They kept silence in those days and told no one of the things they had seen. So today is New Member Sunday, Mardi Gras Sunday, and what's the word? Transfiguration. Transfiguration Sunday. Transfiguration, wow, can be a perplexing concept to grasp. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, transfiguration means to change in form or appearance, an exalting, glorifying, or spiritual change. The story of the transfiguration of Christ, which Chris read for us just moments ago, it's somewhat baffling. Even if the details seem simple enough, disciples Peter, James, and John, they're at the foot of the mountain, Mount Tabor, when Jesus leads them up to pray. While praying on the top of the mountain, Jesus is suddenly transformed, transfigured. His face changes, his clothes become dazzling white, and Moses and Elijah, both who had been long dead, appear with him there. With that, a voice from heaven interrupts, almost like at Jesus' baptism, saying, This is my son, my chosen one, my beloved. Listen to him. The details in this story are many. We could spend a lot of time tearing them apart, looking at them more closely. But I'd like to step back from this story and think about it in its entirety as the ultimate mountaintop experience. While most of us, I imagine, have never transfigured, I do believe, I have to believe, that most of us can recall a mountaintop experience or two. These are the moments when we experience complete unity within us and around us. This may happen when we stand 
on a mountaintop and are captivated by the view. It might happen when we witness the birth of a child. It might occur at the bedside of a sick or a dying loved one. It might happen during a special meal with family. It might happen in a church during worship or in the church kitchen while preparing a shelter meal. It may occur with a friend or a group of friends over a cup of coffee. But wherever and however it happens, we say to ourselves, this is it. Everything fits. All I ever hoped for is here. We can also be transfigured in the opposite direction, so to speak. Just like we can have mountaintop experiences, we can also have valley experiences. We find ourselves in the valley when we are so lost that we can't even find our way to the foot of the mountain. We find ourselves in the valley when we grieve the passing of a loved one, a friendship, or job. We find ourselves in the valley upon the news of a surprising diagnosis. We find ourselves in a valley when we can't seem to find God in church or anywhere else. We find ourselves in the valley when we turn on the news and blurt out under our breath, oh God, have mercy. Whenever, wherever, however it happens, we say to ourselves in those valley moments, this doesn't feel right, nothing seems to make sense. My fear feels stronger than my hope. When my preparation for this morning, I came across a few stained glass depictions of the story of the transfiguration of Christ. These renderings reminded me that in the story of the transfiguration, it is only Jesus' face that glows. In this stained glass window, which is the Bow Chapel window at St. Olive College, Jesus' face is glowing, but his feet are not glorious at all. And so Tom is going to put that image up there, and you can see. See how ordinary his feet are? <laughs> they're skinny and they're bony. They're pointy. One can imagine they might even smell bad. <laughs> the point is that they are nearly identical to the feet of non-divine humans. Human feet. Jesus had very human feet, just like us. And he also had very human moments. He had very human moments just like us. Sometimes we find ourselves on the mountaintop and life is shining, and sometimes we find ourselves in the valley turned from hope, filled with despair. The transfiguration, though, reminds us that the mountains and the valleys are connected. It reminds us that our feet are connected to our faces and our souls are embodied in the entirety of our beings. That which is sacred is connected to that which seems perfectly ordinary and mundane. I wish this morning's reading continued into the next biblical story after the transfiguration because in it, the disciples and Jesus come off the mountain right down to the bottom of the valley. They come off the mountain and they come down to the valley and they find a father who is upset, worried about his boy who's been filled with an unclean spirit and foaming at the mouth. I share this because those disciples came down off that mountain right with them they all came down into the problems off that mountain, into the problems of real life, the challenges of real life, home from that mountaintop vacation and into the real world. And the disciples discovered that God is also down in that valley and does not leave them alone, does not be with them only on the mountaintop. I like the quotation by Henry Drummond, the Scottish theologian, when he said, God does not make the mountains in order to be inhabited. God does not make the mountaintops for us to live on the mountaintops. It is not God's desire that we live on the mountaintops. We only ascend to the heights to catch a broader vision of the earthly surroundings below. But we don't live there. The streams begin in the uplands, but the streams descend quickly to gladden the valleys below. The streams start in the mountaintops, but they come down to gladden the valleys below. We experience the mountaintops of life. We do not question God's presence there. You and I both know what happens the next day, though, when we come down from the mountain. It is real world, the real life. And here's the thing. 
God is with us there too. Transfiguration Sunday on this last Sunday before Lent stands at the doorway between Jesus' life, death, and his resurrection. Jesus' life starts with the light of a brilliant star announcing the birth of a quiet child who is to radically change the world. His life ends with the dark despair of the cross on that hill called Calvary, and yet there is more. In between his birth and his death is his life, where he poured his soul into the world, connecting us all. And so Transfiguration Sunday connects the light and the darkness, the past and the future, the sacred and the profane, the highs and the lows. It reminds us that we are humans made of frailties and made in the image of God all at the same time. The story of the transfiguration of Christ doesn't mean that we should expect all evil to be redeemed in a singular, spectacular moment of divine intervention. It doesn't mean we should wear rose-colored glasses to avoid the work of living ethically in a broken world. It doesn't mean that we will get to glow like Jesus or float out of a cloud of glory. It does mean that there is always potential for transformation. I think of Ukraine, the people, President Zelensky's leadership and resolve. I wonder, after so much divisiveness and questioning, whatever could possibly connect us. I think of uh, Grantland Rogers, who spoke of that during his star gift, wondering what could possibly connect us. I wonder, is this a time, is this the time that we finally come together to stand against authoritarianism? There is always potential, you see. That's what this story teaches us. That's what the transfiguration teaches us. The most ordinary and extraordinary places are ripe for transformation. Grace comes to us in mundane form. Bread, a word, water, the stranger, a breeze, a pair of regular human feet. The promise of transfiguration is that the glory of God transforms our world and us from the inside out. And so may our eyes be open to the transcendence and the transfiguration that surrounds us as we walk with human feet and God's spirit within. Amen.
You may be seated. One of the ways that we seek to walk with Jesus, uh, of course, is in our worship on Sunday mornings, but more specifically is through our prayers. Um, I know you know, but uh, I would just draw your attention that we always print the prayers in our bulletin on Sundays, and there's also um, those prayers are also in the emails that come out on Thursdays. And um, if you would like to receive those emails and are not, please contact the church office. Likewise, if you would like a prayer included, you can mention it to, to me or uh, Rev Kev, or you could uh, send an email uh, to the church office. Any, any of those ways would get your prayer included on this prayer list. Um, it's my custom not to, to go in detail through all of them since you have them in front of you, but I do want to highlight a few this morning. Uh, first, uh, one new to the list that didn't make it in for the bulletin is uh, for Jeff Payne. Uh, Jeff is the younger brother of Steve Payne, and Steve is a neighbor and friend, uh, workout partner of Rev Kev's, and Jeff is uh, suffering from a number of serious conditions and is in a coma. And his brother Steve asks simply for his deliverance. Uh, we continue to pray for Ardell McGee, his wife Anna, and their children as they face both separation and some significant challenges. For Luann McDonough's Aunt Phyllis, who is in the hospital and not doing well. Uh, for Karen Mulla, Terry and Kevin Carlson's good friend. Uh, she recently came home from the hospital after complications from a liver transplant. Maria Honus uh, is having eye surgery this week on February 28th, so please hold Maria in your prayers as she uh, faces that eye surgery. For healing, comfort, strength, and good vibes for Marissa Caponetti, who has been diagnosed with bone cancer, and for her parents, Francesca and Gary, and her siblings, Ava and Nick, as they support her. We continue to pray for Don Skinner, who uh, is still hospitalized following heart surgery in January. We continue to pray for his full recovery and courage and strength for his wife, Debbie, and son, Don. Uh, continue to pray for my daughter, Abby. Um, she completed a round of radiation and chemotherapy for her brain cancer. Uh, you can also include uh, myself and my wife, Lourdes, in your prayers. Um, I will note, I put this in the weekly email that came out this week. Um, I said at the beginning of January that I was going to uh, maintain a Caring Bridge website to keep everybody updated. Um, I found that not to be relieving me of stress, but to causing me stress because it was one more thing for me to do that I wasn't doing. And I expect some of you that signed on there to see how Abby's doing uh, were frustrated and I was feeling badly, so no more Caring Bridge website. Um, you'll hear little updates about Abby in the prayers. Um, and, 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 and it said it released the person in my shoes of having to be asked all the time. I really don't mind being asked. So you can ask, how's Abby doing? And um, I'll either tell you something vague like, She's all right, we're hanging in there, or maybe I'll be you know, more forthcoming, but, but I appreciate it, and Lourdes appreciates it, and we appreciate it, so please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, continued prayers for Patty Scanlon, uh, Scott Greco, a friend of Annie Petiti's, for the family of Sean Salisbury, who died in a car accident uh, at the beginning of February, and as, as we've said any number of times, and uh, we just can't say enough for the people of Ukraine. Uh, we pray for an end to the Russian invasion, that peace and sovereignty be restored, and that the loss of life and injury be minimal, and that the trauma just being caused in those people's lives is, um, is, is addressed. So we just can't pray enough for that. The Lord be with you. So we can think of that mountaintop in the Transfiguration story in any number of ways, as Rev Kev referred to the mountaintop experience, and we certainly know it by that. But today, um, in the context of this prayer, I'd just like to think of it as referring to this moment, today, this moment. So let us be together in prayer. 
gracious and loving God, today, in this moment, we each bring unique experiences of pain, fear, helplessness, grief, even despair. We have named some of the individual trials that uh, members and friends of the church are experiencing. Uh, we'll just offer a moment of silence to uh, let others uh, name for themselves in their hearts the names of those that uh, they're carrying this morning. And God, we also pray for the collective trials that we experience in this troubled world we live in, whether it be climate change, threats to democracy, and the war in Ukraine. Today, God, in this moment, we also bring with us all our limitations, our failures, the times we lied, betrayed, remained silent in the face of injustice, the times we sinned. May we honor these, be present with these experiences, memories, and feelings without a need to feel like we should minimize them or push them away or hush them. Today, God, on this mountaintop in this moment, we also bring our unique gifts and passions and our infinite potential for good. Today, in this moment, on this mountaintop, we bring unique experiences of happiness, laughter, hope, excitement, anticipation, and joy. And we promise God to be equally open to these feelings, not that they will erase or even necessarily ease the suffering, but these are also true, more than true, these feelings are evidence, God, of your presence even in our darkest days. Today, God, in this moment, we open our eyes to this unique coming together of people with pain and sin and infinite potential for good and happiness. And this combination of people, everyone within the sound of my voice, needs just one thing more, Lord. You. You, God, through an experience of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, gather us up all of us, all of it, together. Give us, God, just the tiniest bit of faith to allow Jesus to be present with us on this mountaintop in this moment. And the result will be transformational, transfigurational. The result will be a unique, life-changing manifestation of your love in our lives today. Today, in this moment, on this mountaintop with you, finally, transform and transfigure our suffering, our sin, our potential, our pleasure, and your unconditional life-changing love, sending us back down the mountain to share your love in our hurting world. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. now like to invite those joining the church this morning to come forward and you can stand to my left line up here facing the congregation and please come forward at this time.
Wow. So let me just say a brief word about um, membership. It is easy to celebrate numbers, especially when we have a robust class of new members like this. But membership is really, uh, in the church, is so much more than, than numbers. I was listening this morning to On Being on National Public Radio with Krista Tippett. I didn't catch the name of the journalist, but he was saying, describing the tables that people gathered around that gave meaning and gave identity to our lives. And, and church is one of the most significant of those tables that we gather around that give our lives meaning and identity. And those tables only work when we commit ourselves to be there. If we're casual guests at the table and we kind of come and go from time to time, um, not only do we lose something as a result, but so does everybody else at the table. And so I just thought that that was the perfect representation of what's happening this morning with all these good people committing themselves to be at the table, to be at the first church table. And we're going to introduce them just briefly using their own words, but you'll see that they're an extraordinary group of people that will bring all sorts of gifts and questions and challenges and so much more to us as we continue our life together. So I encourage all of you to uh, you know, make an effort, not just this Sunday, but in Sundays going forward, to introduce yourselves and uh, make yourself known to them. Uh, so we, we told them that they didn't have to stand in order. And, uh, and so I'm going to try to like gesture uh, so that you know who is who. So in fact, maybe I'll just ask, as I say the name, for, for people to give a little wave. So Pauline Greer, there's Pauline is an East Granby resident with her partner, Jimmy. Jimmy's here this morning. She has been a longtime visitor at First Church. In the past 10 years, she has been a participant in Bible studies, services, and a women's retreat. She is a mother and a proud educator. There you go. There you go. Uh, Nicole Jackson, yes, Nicole, has been a resident of Simsbury since 2006. She is married to Chris, a small business owner in the area. Nicole works for Houghton Mifflin Harcourt as an implementation manager in their professional services division, supporting school districts on the East Coast with planning, scheduling, and delivering the professional learning sessions they have purchased. Michael Moon and Clarissa Schooley. Moved to Simsbury from Chicago in December 2020. They have been attending First Church since summer 2021. Uh, I'll just say they, they came to us via our outdoor worship. Clarissa is an underwriting assistant at Business Risk Partners, and Michael is a legal studies student at UHart, soon to be applying to law school. And Brian Noga was born in Manchester, grew up in Glastonbury, and now lives in West Hartford. And George, George and I were saying, Brian, we love the both guys. Too. <laughs> <laughs> They're real, too. <laughs> Jeff Tinney. Jeff has been a resident of Simsbury for 11 years. His son, Kingston, age nine, attends Latimer Lane School. Jeff works for the Simsbury Board of Education, the athletic director, so scheduling is, uh, is, is his, his thing. Um, Lois Stanley. Lois moved to Simsbury in June from Georgetown, Texas. She is a retired elementary science teacher and worked in the local Connecticut school system for 12 years. She has two children, Brad Stanley of Simsbury and Harry Morgan of Houghton, New Jersey, and she has four uh, granddaughters. Welcome, Lois. Uh, Jim and uh, Diane Dipsky have recently moved to West Granby after many corporate moves around the country and beyond. Uh, Jim is newly retired, enjoys finding local XC skiing destinations in the winter and creating a bountiful garden in the warmer months. Uh, Diane has uh, joined Granby Memorial Middle School as a math tutor. She loves exploring the local land, trust with Jim and the dog Happy. Jim and Diane have three young adult daughters, all in college and graduate school here in the Northeast. And I should also say, Jim has taken on uh, the Afghanistan refugee uh, settlement kind of point person for our church. And so there's been news about that in the uh, uh, weekly email, but we know more news about that. But this is Jim. He's the guy. <laughs> yeah. 
My mic. Oh, no. <laughs> No, it's, it's on. on. Okay. Muted. It's muted. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, Paul and Camilla Thompson. Um, Paul was unable to be here this morning, but Camilla is representing both of them. Um, we tend to be uh, sticklers to that people need to be here present in worship to join. The the exception is the couple's exception. So if uh, <laughs> if, if if one of two can be here, then we uh, we, we we sign them up. So um, thank you for Camilla for being here. They've been residents of Simsbury for 25 years. They have four grown children and seven grandchildren, ranging in age from 21 to five years old. Paul is semi-retired from being chief of cardiology at Hartford Hospital. Camilla recently retired from teaching in the Connecticut Community College System. She is active in Simsbury Newcomers and Neighbors, Simsbury Land Trust, and the Simsbury Farms Women's Golf Association. Fun fact, I love the fun fact. She is also a former, former ski instructor. Paul continues to see patients two days weekly in Hartford and spends six weeks a year on the cardiology service at Massachusetts General Hospital. Fun fact, he qualified for the 1972 US Olympic Marathon Trials and has one of the few remaining t-shirts made for the event by Nike founder Phil Knight and his wife Penny. <laughs> All right. Hey, I want to backtrack for just a second. I know we introduced Jim with Pauline, but also Rosie uh, goes with, with Brian, so often you'll see them together, so um, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> uh, Larry and Kristen Wilder, um, over there on the side, they, um, so uh, they've been residents of Simsbury for the past 15 years, moved from West Hartford, where they've been active members of their church there. They have two children, Til Tilden, age 16, who attends Simsbury High School, and Anderson, age 10, who attends uh, terrible school. You might know Larry, he was the innkeeper this year in the puppet pageant. So, <laughs> welcome everyone. Um, I invite you to say with me the 1697 church covenant that was addressed to our church's first members and all members since. Let's wait a minute. So we'll make sure we, yeah. okay, there yeah, it is. That's it. There it is. <laughs> okay. So, I guess we can all turn around. <laughs> you do all, all here solemnly here in the fear of God's all presence of this congregation avouch God in Jesus Christ to be your God. And you do give up yourselves and yours to be the Lord's, to submit to his rule and government in his church, to obey his commands, walk in all religious duties toward God, in love towards your neighbors, and that you will do your duty in bringing up your children in the knowledge and fear of God according to the scriptures. All right, now we have uh, questions for all of you. You may answer as we um, suggest in unison. Uh, first, do you affirm your faith in God as made known in and through Jesus Christ? If so, please respond, I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be disciples of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, to witness to the work and words of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? If so, respond, I do. When you look in the mirror, will you remember that you are made in God's image and loved by God? Will you do your best to look for the image of God in everyone around you, in people of all nations and races? If so, please respond, I do. Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to never stop searching, seeking, and growing in your faith? To continue asking questions, praying, worshiping, serving, singing, and participating in the life and mission of the Church Universal and First Church of Christ, Simsbury. If so, please respond with, I promise, with the help of God. Congregation, I invite you to welcome with me our newest members. Yes. I want you, can you stand to do this? Sure, okay. thank you. We then, members, members of, of the Church of Jesus Christ, Christ welcome, welcome you with, with joy into this communion and fellowship. fellowship. We pledge you our sympathy, our help, and our prayers, that you may evermore increase in the knowledge and love of God. 
God grant that, loving and being loved, serving and being served, we may be prepared while we dwell together on earth for the perfect fellowship of the life everlasting. You may be seated. Let us pray. O God of hospitality, we praise you for the opportunity to welcome these new members among us today. We thank you for their life stories, their faith journeys, their diversity of gifts. May we who have been here a while be zealous in our willingness to listen and to learn. Make us open to revised visions and new perspectives, we pray. Help us to provide a nurturing environment for these new friends as we invite them into our church and into our lives. Enable us to take time for one another as we establish a shared faith and a common history. Bless us all, O God, as we worship together and seek to be your servants in a needy world. Amen. So this is where it says the right hand of Christian fellowship, which um, is really just a handshake, but these are COVID times. And so we had to think about this and we um, are letting each of these take the lead, how they would like to be greeted, whether it's a right hand of Christian fellowship, a fist bump of Christian fellowship, an elbow bump of Christian fellowship, or a socially distanced wave of Christian fellowship. So it is, we are no less welcoming in our, in our greeting. So. <laughs> Welcome. 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 So let's, I, I heard the, the warm applause and how about one, one more time for these good folks. And, Announcements, uh, we, we have a few. Uh, the first is that following this service is the annual financial meeting. Uh, if you haven't already, there's the reports in the back of the church, and so that will be immediately following worship. And um, those of you who are members know that an email went out with the vote already. So, so that the, the most important business of this meeting is already done. So we'll announce the results of the vote on the annual budget, uh, if there's any other remaining questions, but uh, it should be a fairly efficient meeting. So um, uh, we invite our new members uh, to stay if you are able. Um, it's too late now to flee by going to a financial meeting. You know, you'll, you'll realize that uh, um, it's, all, it's pa all part of the fun here. So um, I just draw that to your attention. Um, worship sign-in. Um, so I think you guys know you're asked to sign in using an iPad. I just want to put in a good word for that because I know for some it's tedious or um, frustrating perhaps, but it really helps us out. I think at one point it was reported that it would help with COVID tracking, but that's, it's, it's really not that. It's really a pastoral tool. It helps uh, Rev Kev and myself and the church uh, better minister to you. So it helps us know who was in worship on a Sunday. Uh, it also helps us know who might have missed six weeks or three months of Sundays, uh, kind of giving us an opportunity to follow up with you and just check in. Uh, like so much in the UCC tradition, um, no one is forcing you. And so if you uh, find it particularly objectionable, you might decline, but I encourage you to, to, to sign in. We, we've got a really kind of great uh, system now that, that is very helpful for us to minister to you. And so that, that's just the small thing that we ask is that you sign in on your way in. And then lastly is uh, we've mentioned already, this is Mardi Gras and that means tomorrow is Ash Wednesday. Uh, we mark that day in, oh, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking Mardi Gras, this must be Tuesday, but no, it's not, it's not Tuesday at all. Thank you. So uh, this Wednesday is um, Ash Wednesday. We begin with eggs and ashes. And that is unique to this church. We uh, serve a delicious breakfast of Sal's famous eggs and you know a few other fixins. It's a, it's a kind of open house format. So you can just come and go as you please between the hours of six and nine. 
And uh, it's right here in the parish hall. You can fix your, get yourself um, a plate of breakfast and, and sit at one of the round tables that's set out and have breakfast. And then both Rev. Kev and myself will be stationed somewhere at corners with ashes. And we'll offer the imposition of ashes either on your forehead or on the back of your hand with some appropriate words to whoever would like those. Uh, we, we, sorry, I think we didn't do it last year because we did a drive uh, drive through um, because of COVID, but this is maybe the third year that we've done this, and, and it's, it's really quite remarkable. Uh, it's, it's become quite popular uh, because of the format, people come and go, so it's never like a packed hall, but by the time we're done, a good, good number of people have kind of passed through, so please uh, plan to do that if that works for you. We also offer uh, still a brief but traditional Ash Wednesday service in the evening at seven o'clock. So if you'd prefer that, or you wanna do that in addition to your eggs and ashes, you can also come here in the chapel at seven o'clock. So I'm, um, I guess to introduce the offering, I would just refer again to that image of the tables that we uh, come together around and that in addition to membership, um, our gifts to the church are one of our the commitments we make to those tables. I know uh, Kevin uh, explains this very well, but uh, many of you who pledge to the church have your uh, pledges taken out electronically in some way and regularly, and so are not in the habit of actually putting something in the offering plate. For those of you, there are these cards that we have that just allows you to participate in this ritual of giving that we have. And um, But for others who are so moved, you may also uh, put whatever you please into the offering plate. So with that image of table in mind, we will now receive this morning's offering.
please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come to you now with these gifts. We ask that you bless them. We ask that you take them and make them be your love in this world, in our community, and in our church. It's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. the new members to, to come and stand where, where you were, if you would, and then uh, after worship, if, if folks uh, feel so moved, can come on up and, and just say hello. So come on, feel, feel free, come on up as we uh, share together in our benediction. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor God. Love and serve all people rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and God keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Go in peace.